Thanks to AI, I've cut down my video production time to just a couple hours, and I wanna show you how you can do the same. So if you're ready to save some time and pump out more content, let's dive in. Now my workflow is pretty straightforward. I'm only using a couple of AI tools and the best part, they're all free. So you can just copy my system without spending a single penny. For every step mode to show you, I've got a stopwatch ready. It'll let you know how long each one takes. It all kicks off with ideas and research. Now you might expect me to whip out ChatGPT and drop a basic prompt like suggest video ideas. Let's be real, everyone knows ChatGPT by now. And to be honest, the ideas it spits out aren't exactly top tier. No offense to GPT fans, but if you're a YouTuber like me, it doesn't quite hit the mark. So instead of relying on it, I do my own digging, checking out competitors and keeping up with trends. Usually I already have a rough vision of what I wanna talk about. I'll hop on YouTube, find a few similar videos and start collecting their links. Once I have them, I dump those links into a free tool called NodeGPT. Now, let me tell you, NodeGPT is a game changer and no, not sponsored by NodeGPT in any way. And what it does, it grabs a transcription, summary, and mind map for every video. That mind map, totally useless for me. Skip it if you're following along. The transcription, it's accurate and has time codes, but again, not super helpful for my process. What I do care about is the summary tab. This is where the goal is. Gives you highlights, key insights, and a super short one sentence summary. Perfect for figuring out what the video is about without actually watching the whole thing. I either copy these notes somewhere or jot them down on my iPad or even just good old paper. But I don't stop there. The fourth tab in NodeGPT is the AI chat, and I use it to talk with the video's content. Yeah, you can literally ask questions like, does the video hint at anything? Normally, I would have to sit through the entire video to catch those little details, but by chatting with it, I get a quicker understanding of its angle. This helps me find ideas that weren't explored or figure out how to approach the topic differently. I repeat this for three to five videos, and by the end, I've got a crystal clear idea idea for what my video will be about. For instance, if everyone's making videos about why GBT5 might flop, I might flip the script and talk about why it's bound to succeed. Just an example, but you get the point. So after I finish watching and researching videos, I usually dive into a couple of web articles. Well, dive might be stretching it. I skim the summary, so let's be real. And I use the same no GPT tool to summarize articles. Most tools out there, yeah, they make you copy paste the text yourself, which is such a pain. Why can't they just let you drop in a link, right? Summarizing an article works exactly like summarizing the video for me. I check the summary, ask AI follow-up questions and take notes. Videos, they are for ideas and articles, that's where I get the hard cuts, the data I need. And you know what? In 15 minutes, I'm done. Normally this would take an hour easy. I guess the only reason it doesn't take five minutes is that I'm kind of serious about my research game. So I've been editing for a while and yeah, can get real tedious, but I found a way to speed things up. I use V, the sponsor of today's video. Specifically, their magic cut feature, absolute lifesaver. You know those awkward pauses, the us and ums we all do. Yeah, Magic Cut just wipes those out, no effort. One click and boom, my video is cleaner, tighter, and way easier to work with. Changes the world and creates innovations that affect millions of lives. And Veed also has this eye correction feature. Sometimes I'm not staring directly into the camera, don't judge, it happens. And instead of redoing the whole thing, I just hit a button and Veed fixes it. It's probably some AI wizardry happening frame by frame, but it's so smooth, you wouldn't even know I cheated. Love that. Of course, the basics are solid too. Noise removal, yep. They've got this algorithm that wipes out background noise like it's nothing, and it's super fast. You've decided to record a YouTube video, but you've decided to record a YouTube video, but plus the subtitles on point, they're accurate, customizable, and you can even throw in animations or emojis. Yeah, it's that extra. But honestly, this is just scratching the surface. Veed's got all sorts of AI driven tools, like translating your audio, turning text into video, creating AI avatars. It's insane. If you're serious about video editing and want to save a ton of time, Feed is where it's at. Seriously, go check it out. The link's down below. When I'm done with my research and I know exactly what I want, I head over to ChatGPT. But 
I don't just throw everything at it and expect it to write a whole script in one go. And that's something you need to keep in mind. If you give ChatGPT a huge task up front, it's probably gonna start hallucinating, repeating itself, or just rephrasing what you gave it over and over. The result, a messy, inconsistent script. Instead, I take a different approach, custom GPTs. I've got two of them. The first one is designed just for outlining the rough structure of the video, gives me a clear flow and direction. If you're curious about how to create your own custom GPT, make sure to check out our recent chat GPT guide. I break down everything you can do with it. So for this first GPT, I give it a simple prompt, idea plus colon plus the idea itself. And at the end of the prompt, I'll usually add, use the web for information, just to make sure it does. I've got web access enabled by default in the GPT settings, but it doesn't always go as planned. Even with a custom GPT trained on my exact preferences, ChatGPT can sometimes just do its own thing. When that happens, I just tweak the prompt slightly. For example, I might ditch the use the web request Honestly, you never know which part of the prompt is going to make ChatGPT go off track. Luckily, this time it worked fine. Here's how it's set up. ChatGPT splits the script into sections. Each section starts with a little intro to grab attention and connect it to the previous part. Then gives a list of options that should be covered in that section. The bullet points though are usually pretty basic, no matter how I prompt them in the GPT settings. So I've gotten into the habit of asking ChatGPT again to use the web and fill in those bullet points with more detailed information adds more depth, more useful insights, and sometimes even links to sources. This outline pretty much becomes the backbone of my videos. Now, the second custom GPT, I don't use it as often, but it's the one that actually writes the script. I've trained it by uploading a bunch of our old scripts so it knows our style, our tone, and the vocabulary we use. I set it up so I can just copy the outline from the first GPT, paste it in, and boom, a full script. But even here, I have to tweak things as I go. By default, ChatGPT is set to give shorter answers, so I usually have to follow up with an extra prompt asking it to expand. That's the secret sauce to get in the right length for my scripts. What you need to remember when working with ChatGPT is that no matter how well you set your custom GPTs, it will still mess up. You need to stay on top of things at all times, controlling its every move. In my case, I only have to do minor adjustments, and that's not black magic, I just prompt engineering. And by the way, you can learn all my tricks in our beginner's guide to chat GPT. It's completely free. Now I want you to take this script right in part with a grain of salt. It's been another 10 minutes and the script is mostly done. It's not perfect in any way, but with some of my narration magic, I can make it work. Though sometimes the results ChatGPT gives are far from perfect and straight up refuses to fix it. In these cases, I either start a new chat with this custom GPT or head over to Claude and try to make it work there. With Claude, it works pretty much like you would expect. There's one catch it can access the web. So yeah, it can pump out scripts, but they tend to lack the latest, most relevant info. And for some scripts, that's no biggie, but for others, well, that's when I either have to jump in and add stuff manually or switch over to ChatGPT. But honestly, Claude is still pretty solid at cranking out scripts. You can even upload files to it, so if you had a script done and wanted to use it as a reference, boom, easy. Just know that there is no such thing as custom GPTs with Claude. Claude. So every time you chat with it, you either hope and remember what you did before or start in fresh. Aside from that, it's pretty fast. It took me like three minutes to get a script done. When running this channel, I've tested a ton of AI tools. Not all of them make it into a video though, but if you stand out, those end up on my website, AIMaster.me. I hand test everything on there, so trust me, only the good stuff makes the cut. And yeah, the list of tools is growing. As we test new ones, they will get added. So if you are into AI, go check out the site. Definitely a good starting point. So far, I've got my script ready to roll and I'm about to start filming. No AI here, just me, my trusty camera, my lights, a bit of a editing magic, and uh, boom, we're done. The stopwatch says about two hours. Now, before you start expecting me to gush over some AI that edits my videos for me, let me stop you right there. That's not happening. Sure, there are AI tools out there that can edit video, do a pretty solid job, but for now, I prefer my videos edited by real humans. It's just how I like it. 
Same thing with the thumbnails. I'm not generating any fake images of myself. I just grab my camera and take a couple of good old photos. But here's where AI does come back into play. Even with a great camera, sometimes I like to give my photos a little boost, make them pop, you know? And for that, I use Crea AI. Super simple, no weird tricks. I just upload my photo, select the upscale option, and that's it. Check this out. Now, full disclosure, sometimes the results can get a little, uh, you know, interesting. AI tries to predict what every pixel should be and occasionally it misses, especially with my glasses. But hey, the beard, uh, the hair, spot on. Heads up though, if your original photo isn't high res, you might end up looking like someone else. Even with my good quality shots, AI has somehow altered my eyes before. Like I kind of tell it's me if I squint, but yeah, it all depends and the quality of your original pick. And hey, you don't have to use Crea AI. There are loads of AI tools for this, and we've covered plenty of them on the channel. Right now, the stopwatch says two minutes. Well, not bad, right? If you've been following the channel, you probably remember Magnific AI. I once crowned it the best AI upscaler that hasn't changed. It's still top tier. It's a paid app, but worth every cent. Today, though, we're keeping things free, so check out AIMaster.me for more awesome tools like that. Once my photo is looking sharp, I jump into the thumbnail editing like usual. Then I upload the video, no AI needed here either, but that's because I've been doing this for a while. If you're new to this, ChatGPT can definitely help you out with things like tags. Also, descriptions, all that. It won't nail it 100%, but it's more than good enough. So if I do a quick bit of math, the whole process from start to finish took about two hours and 30 minutes. If I would done everything manually, easily another two hours tacked on. And if you think my content creation pipeline ends here, well, hold on, we're just getting started. So because from here, there are two routes I usually go. Route one, making a bunch of shorts or reels. Route two, turn in the video into a full on text article. Now I've already shown you a bunch of tools to create short clips from longer videos. So I'm not gonna repeat myself. It's literally as simple as pasting link, wait in a bit and boom, done, easy peasy. I'm not heavy into shorts or reels right now, but what I am doing is prepping to add a blog section to the website. Yeah, I will be posting articles about AI there. I'm not a fan of writing my own copy. So what do I do? I take the audio from my edited video transcribe it using Restream and bam, instant text. Restream's awesome because it doesn't limit me on audio length. A lot of tools hide this feature behind a paywall, but not Restream, it's a huge win. All I do is upload my audio, hit a button, and in about a minute, for a 13 minute track, I've got my transcription. No need to sign up, no hassle, it just works. I usually do this when I improvise a lot during filming, but it works just as well if you're using a script like something from ChatGPT or Claude. Well, next step, I take that transcription, toss it over to Claude and ask it to turn the text into an article. Pro tip, ask Claude to suggest images that could fit the article. It won't generate them, but at least you will get a solid list to work with later. And of course, don't forget about SEO keywords. It's a blog post, right? Claude does a great job with that. But if I really wanna make sure I'm covered, I will ask for those SEO keywords again just in case. Trust me, SEO is everything when it comes to blogging. All right, we're almost there. Just one final thing to do. Grab a few images from the blog post. And don't worry, no surprises here. I've got three solid options and you get to pick which one you like the best. Option one, ChatGPT and Dolly. Super easy and hands down one of my favorite options. I've got a detailed guide on this, but in short, Dolly does exactly what I ask. I can copy an idea straight from Claude, paste it and boom, an image. And if I need tweaks, just talk to it like I'm chatting with a real person. The downside though, it's not totally free. You can generate a few images for free, but if you want to use it a lot, you will need a subscription. Still, it's the easiest by far, so I highly recommend it. Option two, mid journey. I will be real with you. This one is my least favorite. The whole Discord chat thing, not the most convenient. And the prompts, you've got to be super specific to get it right, which can be a hassle. But the results are consistently awesome. Quality, resolution, style, mid journey nails it. So if you don't mind the learning curve, you will get some great stuff. And hey, if you need help, we've got a full guide on it for free. 
Option three, Adobe Express. This might be the best option if you're looking for something free and feature packed. It's not just about generating images. It's got in painting, background removal, resizing. Heads up though, the interface is a bit chaotic. Everything's crammed into one editor and it's easy to get lost, but the image generation is solid. You can pick a style, upload a reference, and even create collages. So for versatility, Adobe Express is a win. Now, after writing that blog post with Claude and generating the images, the whole thing took me about 16 minutes, add another 15 minutes for those shorts, and in about three hours, I've got full YouTube video, some shorts and reels, and at least one awesome blog post. And if I ever want to take a break from shooting videos myself, I could just create my own avatar with HeyGen. That AI could basically host the channel for me. If you're interested in seeing a full guide on that, let me know in the comments. Thanks for hanging out, and I will catch you in the next one. Peace.